On the surface, Peter Gabriel's birdie is only a footnote. A collection of recycled material and no lyrics. It's right on the back cover. But if you're thinking of giving Birdie a pass, don't. This is Gabriel's first step into the world of film music, a fascinating work of evocative sonic textures. And it is also a turning point in Gabriel's career. You want to know how? Hello to potters and newcomers. Welcome to a new episode of my ongoing series on Peter Gabriel and his work. This is Simon Mas, your friend with a master degree in music, whose story with Gabriel seems to stretch to a thousand years ago, which means my time is running up. Better hurry then. Wait a second, not only is this a storytelling channel, but well, if you want to appreciate how Gabriel really felt about this soundtrack, we need to talk about his story with films first. I promise it's a detour that will pay off, but still, jump to the next section if you just want to hear about the music. Nah, nah, I'll stay on here. Gabriel's love for films goes back a long way. When he finished high school, he almost enrolled in the London School of Film Technique, but then he was singing in a band with a couple of schoolmates and he decided to give that a serious try. That was Genesis, by the way. Six years later, Gabriel briefly left Genesis when director William Friedkin offered to make a sci-fi film with him. The adventure lasts but one hot minute. On the other hand, Talks about turning the story of the Lamb Lies Down on Broadway LP into a feature film had gone on for years. An endless source of disappointment for Peter. 1983 looked like the right year to finally get involved with and compose for a significant film project. Martin Scorsese asked Gabriel to provide music for his new film, The Last Temptation of Christ. Gabriel immediately accepted, but then the production grinded to a halt. Another dead end. Oh, man. You can almost feel Peter's frustration. 1984. The film window of opportunity seemed closed for good. Gabriel was supposed to start working on his new record, but then director Alan Parker asked him permission to use some of his old songs for a new film, Birdie. Gabriel loved the concept of the film, the two met. Gabriel proposed reworking the old songs into original instrumentals, adding some new pieces, and Parker agreed. Finally, finally the chance Peter had waited for four years. The soundtrack for Birdie was recorded between October and December 1984. That's another hint of how happy Gabriel was of this chance. Three months is an incredibly short time for him to complete any project. Of course, he had the advantage of having a pool of ideas to rework, but there's more to this project. Time to talk about the music and why it's so special then. Birdie the soundtrack is a great compliment to Birdie the film. That's the number one thing to appreciate in such a venture. The film at times is a claustrophobic and inward looking affair. And so it's the music. It can be brooding and ominous. But it is pensive more than dark. It's like a moment of thought stretched into an hour, which in a sense reflects the state of mind of Matthew Modine's character during the film. So, as a soundtrack, Birdie does an excellent job. Another job well done. But does the music stand on its own? I'll be honest. When I first listened to the album Age 15, I thought there wasn't much to it. It wasn't bad, but no singing which was a bad thing at the time, and all of that recycled music, because there are a lot of recycled ideas in Birdie. Close up, 
his family snapshot. 55 seconds of it. Where this flight is not one of us. The heat sounds like the beginning of the rhythm of the heat, literally. There were original themes, but with so many derivative tracks, wasn't it better to listen to the old, proper recordings of these songs anyway? In time, I realized I had misunderstood the album. Gabriel had gone back to some of his music, alright? Evidently, the tracks Parker had wanted to use anyway, but he had reimagined them, allowing each idea to develop on its own, so to speak. A kind of pristine version of the songs that were. Sometimes the result was only slightly different, like in the heat. Some of the time, the change was profound, like in Slow Marimbas, which samples no self control. Naturally, the results of such an experiment have a certain appeal. But if this was the only strength of this venture, Birdie would be an extremely niche album. Luckily, there is much more. Growing up made me more pensive, as it happens. And this music is perfect for inward inspection and thinking. This slow evolution of the music taking its time. suggests distant possibilities rather than any violent emotion, and is waiting to see what will emerge from the big subconscious cauldron keeps me on the edge. What about you? Now that we've talked about the music, maybe we should spend a couple of minutes talking about why Birdie is a significant album in Peter Gabriel's discography. There are two reasons why it represents a turning point in his career. As it happens, Birdie was the first collaboration between Gabriel and producer Daniel Lanois. Lanois was introduced by Peter's guitarist David Rhodes. He also came with warm recommendations from Brian Eno, a close and admired friend of Gabriel. He was ready to experiment with sounds on both ambient records those that he made with Brian Eno, for example, and in more conventional pop situations. Lenoise had just completed The Unforgettable Fire with U2, a story which I covered in a series of videos linked in the description. Daniel had a good sense of humor, a good grip on the production that held the project together, and a good deal of patience which was ideal when working with a slow perfectionist like Peter Gabriel. The collaboration was tested on Birdie, and it was so successful that Lenoir went on producing the next two Gabriel albums, including Peter's bestseller. So, but Birdie is also the final stage of an exploration that started in 1978. Gabriel wanted to stretch the convention of popular music. With Birdie, he defied traditional music structures. No vocals, no choruses, no verses, no contrasting material at all costs, no introductions, no codas. The result sounds like a recording of ghostly music events coming from afar, sometimes in a dialogue with each other. It has something of Brian Eno's ambient music, which was fair enough, since Gabriel liked Eno's work and Anwaz had worked with him for four years at that point. On the other hand, Birdie is drenched with Gabriel's sensibility, and thanks to the prominent use of the Fairlight and Prophet 5 synths, it is unmistakably Gabriel's brainchild. As we said, the album was the first of a series of incursions that Gabriel made in the realm of film music. Incursions that, in due course, will be featured in this very series. But you'll need to wait. 
because Peter's next album changed everything once again, as we will soon see. If you followed me this far, maybe you will want to support this channel. You can do it in three ways. 1. Engage with the video with a comment or a like. This helps the algorithm understand it has to show this video to more fans and it helps you get more videos like this sooner. 2. Spread the word, because good old word of mouth is still the best way to help a project grow. Tell your friends about this channel, both in real life and on your socials. 3. Consider a small donation to my project. It's a bit like buying me a coffee or a pint in real life. Your help is fundamental to help me produce more and better free videos for your delight. Thank you. Now, if you've exhausted Birdie and you want more music in the same vein, here are some suggestions from yours truly. 1. Listen to Peter Gabriel 4. Obviously, check out the video I made about it, which is linked in the description as usual. 2. Since we have mentioned Brian Eno, look into his discreet music. It's the album that kicked off the whole ambient music genre or go for his Apollo, or his music for films. 3. Um, 5. If you want something atmospheric that does feature vocals, how about Radiohead's Key Day, or David Bowie's Low, or Passenger's original soundtrack 1. If you fancy getting more hip music suggestions and a monthly recap of my music-related social activities, you can subscribe to my Telegram channel. It's all free. Well, my dear top actors, this was your Simon Mas with the story of Birdie. Stick around for more music-related tales. For the moment, stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye!